This is Betting Weekly Extra Time, Champions League edition. You're with Dan Roberk alongside me, Steve Wiss, Will White and RJ as we look ahead to the second leg of the semi-finals of Europe's top competition. Just a reminder, the first leg scores Bayern 2, Real Madrid 2 and Dortmund beat Paris Saint-Germain by goal to nil. It means that the Bet Rivers futures prices look like this. Real Madrid are now plus 120, Paris Saint-Germain plus 275, Bayern plus 350, Dortmund a 7-1 shot. Steve, very good day to you. Do those prices look about right? One or two tweaks, but not major changes after the first legs, which I guess, you know, from a, a neutral standpoint and from a footballing point of view, it's what you want. You want something on the second legs? Yeah, good day to you as well, Dan and RJ and Will. It, was, uh, it wasn't the worst of um, first legs for us in the semi-final, was it? We had generated some profit from our picks, and you're absolutely right. Not a lot's really changed in the market because, in a way, we've kind of had results which were sort of expected. You know, I, I don't. I think there wasn't much between Bayern and Real Madrid. And although quite a lot might have expected PSG to avoid defeat, you know, it's never an easy place to go, is it? The Westfalen Stadion. So um, that's why not a lot's changed in the markets. It's all everything's going to now ride on the second legs. Uh, RJ, what did you make of um, the first legs in terms of the prices that we now have in front of us for the futures? Dortmund into 7-1 to one from 9-1. to one. They've given themselves a bit of a chance, at least, haven't they, against Paris Saint-Germain? What do you make of the market as it stands? Yeah, they have. Uh, good day to everyone as well. Um, I, I think I still favour Real Madrid, obviously, as the, as the market does. I think, um, you know... Heading into the second leg with the with the one goal deficit, heading back home, they they it's it's ripe for the taking for them. Um, PSG, you know, I I, I think that's at at, at plus two seventy five now. I, I still think that's pretty entertainable, also. Mm -hmm. um, but but outside of that, yeah, I think you know Dortmund moved up quite a bit, but I have a hard time seeing them come out with with the with the victory here or at least advancing. But it it looks about right. We'll put your bookmakers hat on here. If you were making this market, would you want to get any of these teams? I mean, I know that bookmakers don't generally do that anymore. But I mean, if you were framing this market, would you think, do you know what? I, you know, if if, if I dangled a carrot to one of these teams because I didn't think they were going to win it, is there anything that's, that that you would maybe frame slightly differently if you were going to do something like that? Would you make in the market? Good day, gentlemen, and uh, shout out to Steve for his pick on the uh, on the tie and the Bayern. A Real Madrid first. We'll leg. get to that. Don't that. give him praise too early. We'll get to it. <laughs> well, that's that's what got us into profit for the round. Um, in terms of the outrights, if I were to look to get a team, it'd probably be PSG. I know we've got two tickets on them, but I think they probably will get through versus Dortmund. But I think they're going to have a really tough time in the final, whoever they face. Um, I think they go off significant favourites to either of the other two teams. So that so that would they be the team I'd be looking to get. Um, when it comes to top goal scorer prices, um, Kylian Mbappe now minus 155, Harry Kane plus, 20, uh, plus 120 because Harry Kane has drawn level with Mbappe. Both have got eight goals apiece. And obviously, Will, we have got one or two anti-post tickets on Harry Kane here. And for those that followed us in back in September, you would suggest maybe to just tweak your book a little bit and maybe make sure you, you couldn't lose your units. What are you suggesting that we do here? Yeah, before the first before the first legs, we were kind of all saying that it looks like Mbappe's nailed on. Um, and that Kane goal may have given us the chance to, to take some profit um, out of our position here. We've got those two tickets on Harry Kane in pocket at plus 400-ish. And I think the minus 155, if you go through the maths on Mbappe here, it's actually too big and it's a good opportunity to hedge here. Um, he's 165 any time versus Dortmund in this second leg. Harry Kane's plus 170. And then if you look at the to qualify prices, PSG are minus 165 to advance and Bayern plus 165. So based off my numbers, uh, even with the dead heat rules applying here, which means essentially you've settled it even money on both runners should it finish in a tie. So obviously that's a bit of a negative for the minus 155 Mbappe price. But even with those rules in place, uh, it feels like to me that uh, Mbappe should be closer to minus 200 given what I've said about the maths of them scoring and, and, and the, uh, going uh, going on to advance. So, yeah, we're going to have a, a three-unit play here on Kylian Mbappe, top goal scorer, minus 155, which will lock in at least our stake um, back should he go on to, 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 to take the title. Yeah, that and that's an official play. Uh, and just outside of what we've done on the show, Will, 
if someone wanted a short price bet here, are you suggesting because of the mass that you've just outlined, it's not it's not the worst bet? The maths says it's a good bet. Would I place it myself proactively if we didn't have the cane position? Probably not. Um, it's 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 just just super high variance, and frankly, um, you know. I think Harry Kane probably absorbs a higher percentage of the likely buying goals than Mbappe. And I certainly wouldn't be backing Mbappe at minus 165 anytime versus Dortmund. And I probably would be looking to back Kane plus 170. So even though the maths checks out, I think yeah, as an opening bet, probably would probably would avoid it. Just though. So. Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern US, Paris Saint-Germain against Borussia Dortmund, the first of the second leg semi-finals. Paris Saint-Germain, a minus 215 here. Dortmund plus 600. They've just been inched out a little bit over the course of the last 12 hours or so. Dortmund, as we know, uh, first leg winners by a goal to nil. Uh, Steve, consensus PSG, uh, unlucky not to win. I looked at some of the XG stats here and they were fairly similar. Um, what did you make of that first leg? If you're a, a PSG backer, would you consider yourselves not to be in a better position after that opening 90 minutes? Well, they should have at least scored a goal. I think we can all agree on that one. Dortmund did have chances as well to extend their lead. How there was only one goal in it, I don't know. But this is, this is just too much of a coincidence now in these Dortmund games. And we know in the Champions League, they have this crazy under two and a half goal record and you know you look at the underlying metrics and it shouldn't be that way but it just keeps happening all the time I think you've got a in very interesting stat on the itinerary sheet about their overachievement at the back and I think a lot of that is actually the goalkeeper no one ever talks about him Co uh, Gregor Kobel the Swiss goalkeeper he's only got five Swiss caps I was looking at him every time I watch him he does well like you never hear anyone even going on about him though do you ever but I think he's um, he's a keeper, maybe just coming into his prime, who could end up, you know, an even bigger club down the line. So that is a big advantage for them. PSG, I don't think should have lost the game. Um, and you know, I feel like I had a pretty good read on the game. I mean, I backed Dembele, didn't he? Didn't I um, mm. to score? And he had four shots. He got in the, into the positions. I was kind of proven right about him being uh, being overrated as well, wasn't I? Uh, <laughs> if he had a bit more composure, then he one of those would have surely hit the back of the net so i think i think i've got a good read on the game and my opinion in the second leg is that psg will overturn this deficit and qualify for the final now there's different ways they can do that of course we know minimum objective they're going to have to win inside 90 minutes and thereafter there's extra time potential penalties but i do fundamentally believe what i saw on that first leg what i've seen from both teams this season that dortmund's time is, is going to be finally up OK, we'll, we'll get to Steve's selection in in a second because it's an interesting way to try and get what potentially could be a, a very significant win for us. Uh, RJ, uh, money line prices for you. I mean, Dortmund 6-1, to one, uh, Paris Saint-Germain uh, very short, um, similar to the home game against Nice in the Coupe de France uh, recently. Should they be shorty, do you think? Are they priced about right on the money line? What do you think? <clears throat> no, I think they're about right. If anything, I wouldn't I wouldn't have them shorter. They are um, from a metric standpoint, Dan, you know, they they obviously dominate at home. They've they've scored it almost at least two plus goals at home. In fact, they average exactly two goals over the last five home matches in this competition. They've kept a clean sheet in three out of five at home and, and Dortmund on the road are a completely different side, especially uh, in this competition than they are at home. Um, you know, PSG will be without Lucas Hernandez. Dortmund will be without um, uh, uh, Eddie Ami, uh, Sebastian Holler. Uh, so that's already confirmed. So they do have a, a little bit of um, depth issues, if you will, on this side where PSG outside of Hernandez is relatively healthy. Um, I, I think at this point, it's tough. It was tough to me to arrive at an actual or an official play here. Uh, we could get into the details about PSG's uh, domestic League One title and they're going for the treble, but I think I would lean team total over 1.5 for PSG in this match. I think it's it's something that I kind of just expect to happen, and I usually take bias out of my selections here, and that's more of a bias-type selection. is more just a gut feeling. 
And and I think, you know, if anything, that that would be my lean here in this in this match. Uh, Will, what do you make of the money line? Just just quickly, can anyone look at the the group prices when these two met and and take anything from that, or is this a completely different kettle of fish? Yeah, I've certainly looked at the the prices they went off in match day one. Uh, the main Asian line there was minus three quarters, um, which is probably about minus one forty on the money line. So. The market is certainly giving PSG quite a lot of credit here. Um, there is a perception that PSG can only really get up for the for the Champions League, and I guess they may have gone some way towards proving that in the in the second leg against Barca in the last round, at least. Although they were aided by a, in my eyes anyway, a controversial Ronald Arujo red card early on. Um, they've clearly improved since that match day one uh, game. Whereas Dortmund, my rating for Dortmund stayed about the same, um, albeit with some fluctuation in between. All things considered, my ratings have PSG a one goal favorite here. So the market looks to be giving them a quarter of a goal upgrade for the must win, which is which is pretty typical for this kind of match. I don't know. For me, I'd probably look to be contrarian here, if anything, and go for Dortmund plus one and a quarter on the Asian handicap. The PSG team total, if it is one and a half, that would be attractive, but I'm pretty sure it must be quite short odds if the if the Asian handicap is um yeah. minus one and a quarter. What is the price there, RJ? On let me, that one? let me check quick. I'll get that to you. So it looks like team total is yeah. I mean it's it's unplayable. It's minus two fifty, so that's not even yeah. a consideration. Yeah, so clearly the market is thinking PSG goals. It's thinking Dortmund, you know, have had their time. Um, I'm not sure how many times Steve has said that on this show, but um, they are they are a bit cat-like, aren't they? And, uh, you know, the market is clearly expecting PSG to, 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 to steamroll them here. And if anything, if that, if that one and a quarter go, um, handicap line drifts any further, I'd be looking to get involved. Maybe around plus money, who knows? But... Uh, bear in mind, PSG have been opposed by the Sharps in pretty much every game in Champions League so far this season. So we might see a little bit of movement come kickoff. Uh, mm. Let's get Steve's uh, selection before you have a look at the Asian goal line. Uh, Steve, uh, you've you've had to get a bit creative. Well, I say you've had to get a bit creative. You are getting creative. I don't know what the, <laughs> the reasons why, but um, tell us how you're going to play this one and, and what your your sort of recommendation is here. Well, I, I was searching really, really hard to find a uh, pick in this game. And it was difficult because a lot of the main markets um, are either right bang on where I think they should be. Or, you know, I, I would have been ended up taking a, a, a bet, which I didn't believe was value. Even the goal scorers market. I mean, I looked at the likes of Barcola and Dembele again. Uh, I'm not even sure they'll start. He might even mix it up. Um, not that I could trust Dembele anymore after last week. Um, but I do believe I found an angle here, actually, in the half-time, full-time market. Not not a market I think hardly anyone's betted on in any of the Bet River shows this season. And um, I'm gonna this is a split stake. So I'm I mean half a unit on the tie at half time and then PSG full time. And I'm also having half a unit on Dortmund to be winning at halftime and PSG winning at full time. So <clears throat> the prices for those are plus 390 for the Thai PSG and actually 18 to 1 um, on Dortmund PSG. I, I, I don't, uh, PSG for me will win the match in 90 minutes. I've said that. I'm convinced about it. If you look at their halftime record, though, in the Champions League this season, they've only been winning twice out of 11 games, five draws, and they've been losing on four occasions. Um, Dortmund have only been losing once at half time in 11 Champions League fixtures this year. Um, six times they've been ahead, four draws. Now, what's the use of stats without a reason? I always say that. And I think the reasons are in terms of Dortmund, you think about it, they, they just set themselves up different in the Champions League. First half, hard to break down, always compact, frustrate teams. So I think that could be a good reason why they have a good half time record. You know, players are fresher and all that. And PSG, I think Luis Enrique is the sort of manager who likes to feel a, the opposition out in the first half a bit and then strike in the second half with tactical adjustments and, you know, going for it if he has to. So I think that there's possible reasons in, where, there. I do think the Thai half-time and PSG full-time really does have legs. I really do. You don't, you know, no one wants to be out of the game. 
in the first half, and then after the break, they go for the kill. That was the same kind of thing in the, in the uh, group game. It was nil nil half time, and it ended two nil. Luis Enrique is an experienced coach. He he knows they don't have to get the job done in the first half. They got ninety minutes to get them the goals they need. So a bit of value here. I mean, <laughs> ideal scenario if we get the, the Dortmund PSG, we're getting a massive price winner. But um, you know the the plus three ninety on Thai PSG uh, that just looks overpriced to me, based on the stats that we've seen this season. So there could be a turnaround. Half time, full time market is the one that you should be looking at for that. Some fancy odds available for the various different combinations. Just back on the goal line, uh, uh, Steve. I mean, would you? The Asian goal line is three here, minus one twenty five. Over under uh, is plus one oh four. Um, just gives you. Quick thoughts on that. I'll ask RJ and Will as well on this one for people looking to go on the overs and unders line. What do you think? I thought RJ might strike with the under again. Um, <laughs> I really think that was a brave RJ's play. RJ's had a last great week, run at the back. How, how many winning picks have, on the spin have you got for the Champions League show, RJ? Are we on four? Certainly three. I think three. Yeah. So he only had one in... last week. Yeah. Mm. Just that was a brave, it was a brave play. Yeah, it was he got a brave rewarded play. for it. And, and as I can say, look. These unders keep happening in in the Dortmund games, and um, I would I would lean under again. I, I think if you're going to give me correct, you know, you're going to ask us for correct score predictions. I think PSG to win two nil in ninety minutes. That's the way I, I think. I nearly looked at PSG win to nil, but the Hernandez injury kind of put me off that a little bit. And Dortmund will have threat, but um, yeah, I'd go. I'd actually go under the Asian goal line of certainly three point two five. Yeah, RJ, you mentioned that overs for, for PSG total, but it is short. I mean, could, could you see there being four goals in the game for the Asian line uh, players to cash in full or not? I think it's going to be tough to see four, Dan. I, I, I think the real the reality could be three. I, I agree with Steve, 2-0. I could see a 3-0 type match. I think Dortmund over the weekend uh, put up five against Augsburg. Mm. Maybe they... Uh, Don't remind Steve of that one. They got their... Uh, their goal spree out of the way too early, and um, and I and I expect I expect PSG with with rest over the weekend to come in firing. But yeah, I'd have to lean under three at plus one oh, <clears throat> excuse me, plus one oh four. It's tough to see four here. Uh, Will just digressing slightly. What happened to the Dortmund uh, money line at the weekend when the reserve team was announced? Were you across that at all? Uh, yeah, I was following it. I mean, they didn't drift a huge amount because. Right. Everybody it, was in 10 cha- it was 10 changes, wasn't it? Was it yeah. always factored in, I guess? Is that yeah, what I mean, I guess mm. it was the two. They started uh, Papadopoulos and um, yep. and Mateus More as well. So they had a couple of kids. And then they also had the, the young German playmaker. I can't remember his name. It begins with a W, I believe, or an M. Anyway, yeah, I mean, it was expected. Um, and so, well, maybe yeah, the maybe the big win wasn't expected. Like, the big win definitely yeah. wasn't expected. <laughs> no, that, I mean, they went off odds against, right? So... Yeah. So Steve's play on Angsburg plus a half uh, was I did actually get the value at uh, even money, um, but yeah, he can't, I mean, he can't <laughs> spend value because you can't eat value. <laughs> in, in value, soccer. Yeah. Value doesn't uh, put food on the table. Um, uh, Steve alluded to the line that I, I ripped from our friends at Opta, um, which basically says that uh, Dortmund are the side with the biggest difference between goals conceded and expected goals against in the Champions League this season, plus ten point seven. That's nine mm. goals conceded. From nineteen point seven xg, what do you make of the uh, the money line and the variations of, of those markets? Will anything that that caught your eye that you nearly leaned to? Uh, you mean the totals? Yeah, um, it's. I think it's been priced bang on, really. Um, yes, the first leg went under, but both teams had numerous chances, and it should have been way more than one goal. It, the market's been priced up accordingly here. I think. Gone to head, I probably would be with the under, but that's only because it's plus money and, and the over's minus 125. So, yeah, I think this one's been priced priced okay. pretty quickly. Uh, who goes through very quickly, Will? Who makes the final? <sighs> PSG. RJ? PSG. Will, um, Will, Steve? It's a full house for me, PSG. 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 Uh, Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, Real Madrid versus Bayern. Real Madrid minus 114, Bayern plus 300, draw plus 290 here. Um, over and under two and a half is minus 152 plus 123, respectively. Real Madrid drawn the last four in the Champions League. Draw was tipped by uh, Steve uh, in the uh, in the first leg. You're going in again, Steve, here, aren't you? 290 now. Done. Yeah, plus 290 on the tie. It, it wouldn't in the first leg with that. 
and I'm going to take exactly the same bet. I said uh, on the show last week, I, I can't really separate these two sides. I don't think there's a lot in it at all. And the first leg, I think, kind of proved that in a way. Bayern were the better team, I felt, overall. But they still didn't win. Um, should have won. I think 2-1 would have been a fair score, actually. But, uh, you know, Real Madrid find ways, don't they, to, to avoid defeat here. I just don't think it's a guarantee that Real Madrid are going to win this second leg in 90 minutes. You know, they, um, I think Bayern, look at how Bayern played at the Emirates against Arsenal. A very good Arsenal team, it must be added. Um, their tactical setup was excellent. They, on the night, they could have won on a, on a different day. And um, Real Madrid, I think, are going to have to maybe go for it a bit more than, than normal. Perhaps uh, Ancelotti's no mug either, so he'll be, he'll be ready for Bayern's tactics. But Bayern have got that, that Bayern 11 is a good 11, you know. We've we said it before. How have they underachieved so much over, in, on the whole this season? But when you look at that 11 that they can field, there's a lot of quality, quality players who, if they raise their game, are very capable of coming here and, um, and getting a result one way or the other, which can take them to Wembley. But, um, yeah, I just have this feeling that this one could go all the way. Penalties, potentially, extra time penalties. So, yeah, I'm going to go and have, you know, double dip with this tie again. Why not? You know, I, I, it's kind of, I'll tell you what it is, Dan. It's kind of, a, I'm kind of opposing Real Madrid really here. I kind of want to oppose Real Madrid. But rather than settle just for the gun barrel plus a half at, what, minus 125, yeah, you know, I'll I'll go swinging for some value again. It's kind of worked better for me this season when I've gone a bit more aggressive, and uh, you know I've got some credit in the bank from the from the from the first leg. I think you know there's so many different. I don't think it'd be nil nil, but the likes of one all and two all are very much in play again, Dan. So tie for me plus two ninety, and uh, hopefully buying for the sake of our outrights can progress overall. Uh, Will buying were uh, plus four ten to win at Arsenal. And they're plus 300 to win at Real Madrid. Does that mean that Arsenal are better than Real Madrid? It does, yeah. It does. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, my, my ratings certainly say so, and they have done pretty much for the majority of the season. So, yeah, you've got you've to assume that, right? It's not like Bayern have had a huge uptick in form that would justify that price differential. But I, I like Steve's pick. Um is it plus 290 now? Plus 290 now. Those are the revised plus prices two. from John, our graphics guy, about half an hour ago. Wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty ballsy for the just for the game state, right? I mean, Bayern nice didn't... I think I've got that wrong. Let me check it. I <laughs> know, I'm sure it's right. Go on. Yeah, Bayern, Bayern didn't really press very much in the first leg. And despite that, there were, there were four goals and 3.48 XG, six big chances. I think Bayern look to uh, to sit back here and counter, uh, which, which frankly is 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 a bit of a danger for my bet. Um, but I like the over two point seven five goals uh, minus one twenty four. I don't really understand how the market has got set up for the same goal line as the first leg after what we saw in the first leg. The four goals that we had, um, two of them were. Two of them were av- absolute moments of magic. Um, the Tony Cruz pass to Vinicius, albeit you know I think Kim was a bit aggressive with his uh, with his run to try and cover Vinicius there. Mm, um, that's very kind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think I, I don't think the Real Madrid penalty necessarily was a, was a Kim mistake. I mean, trying to cover and get your body in a position to cover a strong. Rodrigo in that position is quite difficult. But the point I'm trying to make is that of the four goals, we had two moments of magic and there are lots of players that can provoke moments like that um, across this tie. And two were penalties that were, were, that were essentially were provoked by intense the intense threat that both sides possess. And um, especially in, in regards to dribblers kind of around and inside the box. Um, so essentially... We've got two teams that really have uh, very high levels of threat, and those levels of threats will exist throughout the 90 minutes or the 120 minutes. And does, you know, whatever the game state is, however both coaches look to approach this, and I am pretty convinced that Tuchel will sit back because that suits this Bayern team to hit Real Madrid on the counter. Real Madrid are vulnerable to the counter. And what do Real Madrid like to do themselves? Well, they like to play in transition and they like to, to break, through a, break through a high press. So 
you know, I think Tuchel will look up to set up to, to stifle that, but I don't think that's going to prevent this from going under. I guess the market is kind of banking on a slow start. We did kind of see a slow start in the first leg for the until that Vinicius goal. It was pretty cagey. Neither team was pressing that aggressively. Um, but you know, if we get if we get a first goal in the first half here, the, the game could 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 be uh, could be lit up again. And um, you know, just looking at just looking at this Bayern back line of uh, the likes of Eric Deer and Kim, if he starts, the Licht might be back actually for Bayern, but. It's hard to see with the weapons on both sides there being fewer than three goals here. So so my pick is is over 2.75 at minus 124. It's strange, isn't it? Bayern seem to have bought into what Thomas Tuchel is all about, but probably all too late because obviously he's leaving anyway. And it's not really the way that Bayern play because they yeah. naturally should be a front foot side. But maybe in Europe, they have found a way to do it and eventually have bought into it. RJ, give, give us your general thoughts on the game before we get your play, because we've had the plays from Stephen Will. What, what do you think, sort of money line and overs wise? Any sort of <clears throat> thoughts generally on the fixture? Yeah, I'd have to lean money line Real Madrid at minus one ten. Um, even against this side, anytime you can you can get Real Madrid around even money, I think it's worth a, a bit of a nibble, um, if you will. And then in terms of goals, I, I I I do like goals here. It's hard not to, but for some part of me, feels as though this might be a tighter, more cagey type match because uh, you know neither side will be looking to make any mistakes. They know what each side's capable of. There's tons of playmakers on the field for both sides. Um, Bayern is generally aggressive in forward forward approach, right? Um, I think Real Madrid does look to exploit counterattacks, and I think the biggest thing here is going to be Bayern's depth. Um, they still have a slew of injuries. I think Eric Dyer is questionable. I'm not sure if he's going to play, but it, he is listed as questionable with a head injury right now, so that's something to keep an eye on. But I think at this point in the season – because of their their injury concerns that Real Madrid is fully healthy, um, that they'll, they'll be able to exploit Bayern here and come out on top. But, you know, I kind of lean Real Madrid money line, you know, maybe three goals, but it's tough to see another explosive match like we did in the first leg, in, in my opinion. But you are um, hoping for a goal scorer, but aren't you here? I, I am. I am. So speaking of which, um, Vinicius Jr., anytime goal scorer at plus 150, um, hard to ignore this this pick. Uh, he scored two goals in the in the first leg, including a uh, a late penalty, uh, as, as Will alluded to. Uh, the biggest the biggest factor here, because I said it was really difficult to find anything super attractive in the main market, in my opinion. You know, Vinicius is just a knack for scoring big goals or crucial goals in big games, right? As as evident by the the first leg. Um, He's just got great speed, dribbling ability. He creates problems for defenders. He 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 kind of opens up the defense. He attracts uh he attracts the defenders to him, um and he you know he just creates space right and and that just allows for some key plays to occur for this Real Madrid side. Um, he's quite consistent right, especially over the seasons, uh, last few years and this year in the Champions League domestically, um. He bounces back typically. He's got good mental toughness, and he's one of the top young talents in Europe. So I think, you know, at plus 150, targeting him as an anytime goal scorer. I know he scored two in the first leg, and sometimes it's it's tough to mirror uh, those type of performances. I think with this 2-2 draw, with with all the play for here, you know, he'll get on the score sheet, and and, and I think we'll, we'll end up cashing this one here at plus 150. Yeah, let's hope so. He scored in three of his last four home Champions League games, which uh, bodes well. That is uh, Vinny Jr. Uh, to score at any time, which is uh, RJ's uh, pick. Um, to go through then here, just to to wrap up, because uh, I mean, I'm presuming. I mean, this is this is trickier, obviously, Steve. Are you going for a tie again? I mean, you know, which which way should we land in terms of? To qualify, I mean, to qualify prices here, Real Madrid minus two twenty-five, Bayern plus one sixty-five. On on the basis of you, you think it might be a draw and go extra time and penos. Are we are we saying that Bayern might be a bit of value plus one sixty-five? I mean, just before we move on there, I might have actually spotted another pick um, live <laughs> as we're recording. The boys have got me thinking here about. I mean, Bet Rivers offer a lot of markets, by the way, for the Champions League semi-finals, mm. and penalty kick to be awarded is plus one eighty. 
as Will said, as RJ said, there's a lot of dangerous players on show here. Uh, dribblers. We've got a referee. The best referee in the world is in charge of this match, Simon Machiniak. And he averages, his career averages for penalty awarded in the Champions League is 0.43 per game. Hmm. This is a referee who in the World Cup averaged one penalty per game awarded. So he's the sort of ref who will point to the spot if it's pretty obvious. Hmm. I, I, have to, I mean, this is not going to be an official pick, but for those who can access that market, penalty kick awarded at plus 180, I think you could do an awful lot worse. Um, and that would obviously aid the the goal scorer pick with Vinicius. I think Harry Kane to, to score any time at plus 163 is not a bad price either, by the way. In terms of going through, I'm going to stick with what I said after the first with the first leg. Bayern Munich uh, to make the final for me. I think um, Thomas Tuchel can come here and put in a very good tactical game plan. He He's the sort of manager I really like in one-off games. Or I've always said that. Over the course of a season, I'm not sure. Maybe he falls out with too many players, but in a one-off game, he can get Bayern fired up, motivated. And, um, you know, I'm going to say Bayern Munich to win. On penalties, Germans always win on penalties, don't they? So, uh, there you go. <laughs> RJ, what do you think he's going to go through? I'm still going to stick to what my belief was prior to the first leg. I like Real Madrid to advance. I think uh, Bayern off a draw and off a 3-1 loss against Stuttgart over the weekend. Um just maybe in the back of their mind with their their injury concerns, I have to go have to go Real Madrid. Uh, Will you pressed up with Bayern to qualify last week, didn't you? I can't remember what the price was, but I'm presuming plus one sixty. Yeah, it was yeah uh, okay. So would you go in again at one sixty five here? No, because essentially they they got a draw in the home leg, right? And if they'd held on for that two one win, which I think they deserved, um, we would be in really good shape mm. because then then they would be able to set up. Um, in the way that would most likely thwart that Real Madrid, those Real Madrid threats, and know that a draw would take them through without the need for extra time and penalties. Much more nervous about it now. Um, yeah, I just feel like we've been hard done by with Bayern this season. They have been banged up all season long. Um, they performed above expectations in the first leg, conceded that late equaliser. They've got yet more injuries now coming in to this. Uh, Guerrero is officially out. Um, hopefully they get to licked back. But the idea of Kim trying to defend those fleet-footed Rodrigo, Vinicius, and then Bellingham with his late runs, I mean, it's just the stuff of nightmares, right? So... I bet by and I pressed up on Brian at plus 160 to qualify because the price was too big. Um, is the price too big now? I think it's about right. Am I confident in them going through? No, but um, they've definitely got a shot. They've definitely got a shot. Poor old Kim, 12 months ago, one of the best and most sought after defenders in the world now. Uh, reduced to ridicule by our panel. Well, not quite ridicule. Um, that wraps up Betting Weekly Extra Time Champions League edition. Many thanks to Steve, Will and RJ. Later this week, the boys will be back tackling the Europa and Conference League semi-final second legs. So watch out for the best bets from those competitions. For now, though, from all of us, it's goodbye.